aquaculture business owner, how do you tackle the balance in being able to run a sustainable business and being profitable at the same time? That's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. Welcome to episode 9 of the Business of Aquaculture. This episode, I'm delighted to have Mr. Rocky Boschman, who is the Managing Director of Greg Seafood. Welcome, Rocky. Thank you. It's uh, great to be here. Thanks. Mr. Rocky Boschman is the managing director of Greg Seafood. He's demonstrated history of building and leading strong management teams in the aquaculture space. He's skilled in salmon farming, change management, and communication. He is a strong business development professional with a master's in business administration focused in leadership from Royal Roads University. Today, we're going to buy talking about maybe salmon aquaculture and maybe Rocky is going to enlighten us on what's going on in that species. So welcome again, Rocky. Thanks for being here. Thanks. So my first question is maybe you can give our audience a little bit of background on how you got started in this industry. Yeah, you know, uh, you, you might hear this story again and again because this isn't unique for me, but I actually grew up in this very center of Canada, Saskatchewan which is about 1,500 kilometers from uh, any ocean in any direction you might go. But as a little kid, you know, I was really fascinated by the ocean. And when I was a kid, the only way that we could learn anything about the ocean or see pictures or see film was through Jacques Cousteau. There was no Google. We couldn't just look at pictures. We couldn't see anything. It was Jacques Cousteau on Sunday night, and that's how we learned about the ocean. And he really was a hero of mine, and I was very fascinated by by Jacques Cousteau and the ocean. And um, sometime when I was a little kid, sometime in the early 70s, uh, Jacques Cousteau on one of his programs said that we must plant the sea and herd its animals using the sea as farmers. So this is a very famous quote of Jacques Cousteau. He said that that's what civilization is all about, farming replacing hunting. And for some reason, that really resonated with me. You know, it's a call to action. And it sort of was able for me now to see why was the ocean important to me and what, and what could I do in the future? And so, uh, so uh, born and raised in Saskatchewan, but I moved out to BC and did a, a marine biology degree at the University of Victoria. And when I graduated in the mid 80s, uh, the salmon farming industry was just beginning. And I was able to graduate and get a job in a, in a small commercial hatchery. And uh, essentially, it's all I've ever done as a career now is work in some aspect or facet of salmon farming. Well, the industry is honored to have you. I always admire people who has been in the industry for quite a bit. I'm only in the aquaculture space for 13 years now, but kudos to all of the people who started mm -hmm. this industry because I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen a lot of changes, which lead me to my second question. So what do you think are the pros and cons in terms of I guess the species that the, you guys cultivate at Greg Seafoods or the industry in general? For ocean-based aquaculture, which is mostly what salmon farming is in the world, the biggest con is this conflict of doing business in the public space. It is the tragedy of the commons. It's that's how it's perceived. And people are rightfully always very wary and very concerned about companies uh, using the public space as, as the, their main place of operation. So this conflict uh, plays itself out in many ways. And, uh, you know, you can just follow the media on a constant basis to find out that British Columbia in particular is a very complicated place to grow salmon because of the politics. And it is really because of this conflict. And so as a salmon farmer, we have to be super sensitive to this. You know, it really calls us to a very high standard uh, of the way that we do business and, and transparency. You know, we the public wants to know what we're doing and we have to give them a good window into what we're doing. And the con? Oh, I mean, the pros. <laughs> well, you know, again, I guess it goes back to maybe a, uh, this higher idea, uh, even coming back to the beginning of Jacques Cousteau, you know, which I want to shout out for. We don't want to forget that guy. He's, he's, uh, Maybe younger people don't know who he is, but there's this idea about uh, his concern was about world population and, and how we were going to feed the planet sometime in the future. For us, that future is always we look at 2040, 2050, what the world, what is the world going to look like? Well, there might be nine or 10 billion people living on the planet. When I was born, there was only three billion. Right. Oh, there's seven and a half. Someday there'll be nine or 10. All of these people are, are trying to feed themselves on this from the same ocean or from the same land resources. So food production is become, going to become very critical. Aquaculture, I've always believed, is going to play a very large role in that. 
in most aquaculture talks, people will eventually refer to this graph. And so you can Google this graph, which is FAO, Fisheries and Aquaculture Commission <laughs> of the UN, and it compares wild fisheries with aquaculture. So just Google wild fisheries versus aquaculture. And you will see a graph that essentially shows an increase in wild fisheries to about 1992, and then a flat line or a slight decline going into the future. So we know since about 1992, we cannot take any more wild fish from the ocean than we already are. That's the level of sustainability. If we take any more, we're probably going to be damaging that species. On that same graph, it does show the rise a very steep rate of increase of aquaculture. So as the population grows at that rate, the difference of, of production of that protein from the ocean is being made up from aquaculture, whether it's shellfish or, or salmon or tilapia or, or many other species, because the world continues to have to go to aquaculture to make up that difference. And I believe it was last year or the year before when the output from aquaculture actually exceeded the output from wild fisheries for the first time. So going forward from a sustainability conservation point of view, aquaculture plays such a strong role uh, in the future of the world. Very well said. And I always like when my guest talks about numbers and statistics because I have a logical mind and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, in management, what you can't measure, you can't improve. So Absolutely. it's a very, it's a very telling story on how this, I mean, the brink of collapse of the wild fishery is outstanding and very sad for that matter. But on the other side, as you mentioned, an opportunity wherein people will have to start thinking of where the food is going to come from and aquaculture is filling in the vacuum, especially with this tragedy of the commons that you mentioned. So that's great. So thank you. For it that. is. But one of the other challenges, of course, though, is that aquaculture isn't just a conservation enterprise. It's a business. Yeah. And so we measure our success in business KPIs. We have to be profitable. We have to return, have a return on investment from the, from the great and, and venturous people who decide to become investors in aquaculture. They do want to see some return eventually. And so uh, this is a big challenge for us is to uh, understand our costs, to control our costs, to uh, develop markets to spread the good news of aquaculture and our products into the market to the consumer, to help educate the consumer that this is a really good choice for a lot of reasons from nutrition, uh, good protein sources and uh, sustainability. This is something they should think about. And so, you know, this is a big challenge of aquaculture for sure. Yes, and I think for us who's in this space, it gives us, how do you say it in English, um, keep our toes on the ground because we always have to strike this balance in right. terms of sustainability, conservation versus, of course, having to be stewards of the ocean and also make a profit at the same time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So my last question to you is, what do you think are the top three trends that's going to happen in the aquaculture industry? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, something that's becoming really important and, and more and more every year, and I see it as a trend, is the use of the data that we collect. You know, it wasn't very many years ago when someone might have one held hand or one handheld oxygen meter on a farm. And now we see, you know, hundreds of probes in every farm. We're collecting at Grieg in BC, we collect more than a million and a half uh, data points every day. Wow. So now what do we do with all that environmental data, all that oxygen, salinity, temperature, plankton species, chlorophyll? Well, it's too much for our human brains to deal with. And so now we all of a sudden we see AI start to appear. We have to use machine learning or computing to understand these trends. But now we can understand these trends, these mysteries that we've been dealing with for decades, all of a sudden things become clear. We can start forecasting environmental events. We can start understanding how uh, the ocean is affecting the behavior of the salmon in our pens. So this is an, a very important trend is to be able to understand what's going on, to see the live reporting. I can pick up my phone and using apps, I can see what's going on in everywhere in our operation. But that level of transparency is becoming available to the consumer. That's becoming really important. The consumer wants to pick up their phone and say, look at a QR code and say, well, where's this coming from? Now they can see maybe a live feed from a farm or in a pen or under a pen. All of these things that concern them. This is, the, this is a really important trend in our business. And, you know, and I think we're really trying to lead the way. We, we, we're thinking about it and investing and talking about it all the time. The next trend, I think, is 
is connected to that. And that's the use of technology to mitigate uh, the changing environment. Right. Uh, obviously, in my time, I've seen a lot of changes in the ocean environment. And this could be from climate change or, or uh, climate disruption. Uh, it's to do with urbanization and the amount of pollutions coming out of the river systems. It's to do with our industry and what how other interests industries have affected the environment. But for a lot of reasons, uh, we have to mitigate the harmful risks to, of being in, in the ocean. We have to uh, stabilize oxygen. We have to stabilize uh, temperature gradients within pens. And we're just really working on a lot of technology to either operate what we call semi-closed, so partially separate our fish from the ocean so we can control that, our, that environment, or to be fully closed, right. to be able to when we want to be able to close up a whole entire pen and protect it from a harmful algae bloom or toxicity in the water or a really low oxygen event, which are becoming you know, more and more uh, prevalent as we go forward. So the, a couple of big trends, I think genetics is gonna be a really more and more important in salmon farming, but in other species, because it, just like on land, we're trying to understand what farming might look like 20, 30 years from now and what species is gonna, or what, form of that species is going to be successful, whether that's a corn crop or a soya crop or salmon in a pen. Uh, genetics becomes more important. Well, and then, sorry. Oh, you got some more. Go and give it some well, more. I would say in BC also, I also want to say, I do not want to, uh, the, the most important thing going on for us in BC and in Canada is the fact that our country is doing a lot of work around reconciliation, social justice. Our right. country is transforming. We're really looking at the past and, and the thing, way that we have harmed Indigenous people. And we're trying to find an equitable path forward. And companies like Greek Seafood, who farms in BC, we really have to uh, learn that. We have to understand that. We have to try to become the company that uh, is successful uh, farming in a, in a future where there's more self-determination amongst Indigenous people. They have more political control of their the territories that they have the rights to. And... Also, the aspect of reconciliation, which means that we are uh, consulting in a proper way about our future developments, that we're finding unique and novel ways of sharing the benefits, uh, the business benefits, and also the social benefits. We're providing good jobs, we're training, we're removing all the barriers uh, for people who want to work with us from wherever they're from, and we're giving them that opportunity and we're providing that net benefit to all the communities that, where we work, whether that's small coastal town BC or whether that's an, uh, an indigenous community that's been there for thousands of years. We have to really earn our right to, to be in that space. Well, thank you so much. That's a lot of nuggets of wisdom I got right there. <laughs> thank you again for being here. And my biggest takeaway from this call, um, I like how you talked about the harmony between conservation, but also being like progressive in terms of technology that's happening in the top trends, but also mentioning in terms of the consultation that we're doing and reconciliation, not only with um, indigenous people, but also working inside the environmental, whether that's a constraint or an advantage to our industry. So I like this harmony happening in my head. I'm imagining this two totally different opposite, but yet working together, same as what we're doing in the aquaculture aquaculture space well thank you so much again rocky and maybe you can give our audience on how they can get in touch with you either by your website or whatever social means possible mm. yeah and it was a pleasure to, to speak with be with you today maybe we'll get another chance absolutely uh, the company that i work for greek seafood bc uh, you can uh, look at us through our website at uh, greekseafood.com uh, people can reach out to me either find me on linkedin rocky boschman and there's contact information there. They can find me if they have something they want to talk about. Sounds good. I'm really honored to have you on the show. And thanks again. And yes, I will definitely take your offer on being able to connect again. Thanks, Rocky. Okay. Thank you.